Hey guys, I wanted to quickly give you a tutorial video on how to ring out your microphones, which is something that you're gonna need to do at some point. Headset microphones, like clip-on microphones, especially have this issue. So we're gonna look at that today. If you have already uh, equalized your system out, you've made sure your speakers are in the right place, uh, you've used pink noise maybe to do that, you've figured out people on your stage as far as positions, not having them buy speakers, um, not having them standing underneath your house speakers and having their microphone pointing up at them, and you're still having problems, this is gonna be how to get rid of those uh, frequencies that are having problems that are ringing, okay? So I have a microphone here. This is the microphone I use on Sundays. And just for the sake of illustration, we're gonna be using this one. I have it pointed straight up at the speakers so that when I increase the volume, it's going to get some feedback. And I will also mention quickly that the time that I've had maybe the worst problem with this was actually not on a vocal mic, it was on a guitar amp. And I ended up having to cut like three different spots or maybe even four different spots that were ringing and it worked. It's a great tactic. So you might have a microphone that rings like crazy and by doing this you're going to be able to fix that. All right, so I'm back here at my soundboard and we're going to be using again microphone or channel 9, my microphone. So I've got that unmuted here. One thing to keep in mind before you're starting this process is to make sure that your master fader is at zero or wherever you run it on a Sunday. If you run it at five, then make sure it's at five. Um, I'm gonna put mine at zero. And then also to make sure that this fader is where it's normally at. So again, mine's at zero. Now, you're gonna wanna get into an EQ. This is the EQ that's built in on the channel strip, uh, on my microphone's channel strip, this EQ right here. And we're going to be just finding those notes that are going to ring as I increase the volume. So let me demonstrate that quick. As I come over here and I increase the gain on that microphone, I'm not going to be messing with the fader. I'm just leaving that at zero. But as I'm increasing the gain, so my microphone is ringing. Now, also, if you look over here, you can see the frequency. That's the problem. It's right there at 6, uh, 6K. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be finding that frequency and cutting it out, which is actually pretty easy to do. So this is how I'm going to do that. You're going to want to take one of your bands, one of your EQ bands. I'm going to use number two. So you can see right here, I've got number two selected. Um, if you have the option to choose between a parametric EQ and a vintage EQ, I would choose parametric. Okay, so PEQ, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn my gain up to about maybe three, so you can kind of see where that band is, and I'm going to turn my Q all the way down, or all the way up, you know, to the highest number, which is gonna be the thinnest band. Now, different boards, their Q is set differently. So mine, the maximum is 10. I've seen ones that go to 100. Um, Q is actually not an, a definite uh, proportionate number. It's kind of like just the num It's just the letter we use to, uh, to associated with how thin the thing is. But every board has its own standard of what Q is. And I'm going to turn mine up to 10. Like I said, that is a thin band. You can see that's as thin as I can get it. And I'm just going to sweep that over here to that problem spot. There it is, okay? So you can see as I get over to that, there was no problem at this point. My gain was down enough where there was no ringing, but as I got that band over top of it, now it's starting to ring. So I'm gonna keep it right on that note. I'm gonna just turn off the gain, or take the gain back, sorry. Now it's flat. Now what I'm gonna do now is just kinda slowly increase my gain here and then as my gain is increasing and that note starts to get loud, I'm going to take this band 
that we just found and I'm gonna cut back on it, okay? And I'm gonna do that until the next note pops out and you'll see what that looks like, okay? So I'm increasing it now. Just cut back. All right, so let me turn the gain up a tiny bit more. Ah, okay. So now we have another note. So I'm going to take my second EQ band, so I'm going to use number three. Do the same thing, make sure it's at 10. And again, just kind of sweep that over right to that spot. And then I'm going to cut that one. And as you can see, as I cut that one back, this one starts coming back in. And I'm going to go to number two now. I'm going to cut that one a little more. All right. So let me increase my gain one more time, final time. Okay, now you can see there's actually a new note here. So we've cut those just enough where they're not a problem anymore. And this is the note that's the problem. Um, 6K is coming back a tiny bit, so, but it's, it's not coming back any, in any kind of problem way, okay? And then we also have this note here that's ringing. Um, it's kind of oscillating back and forth based on the fact that my voice is in the room right now. So what we could do is we could do it again and I like I said when I was doing this with my guitar I had to cut three spots so bring that over give it a little bit of gain here and I'm just gonna cut it okay and there's that other one coming back in so let me turn my gain down so that's it, pretty much. That's how you cut those frequencies, um, the offending frequencies that were giving feedback. If you came in here and just looked at how much I actually cut, it's only two and a half decibels here and two and a half here, and I only cut about one. Uh, I actually bumped that. I think it was a, it was at one. Yeah, I cut one decibel from that third spot, and that should be enough. If you've taken care of your three most problematic notes, you shouldn't have any more problems. Um, sometimes, again, if, if it's a poorly placed microphone and your speakers are not tuned, um, that's going to be an issue where you're going to have almost unlimited possibilities of problem notes. But if your speakers are good and your microphone's in a decent place, it's not pointed right at your speaker, you probably won't have to cut more than two or three bands. So one final thing I would add is that there's different techniques for this. And if you, I was looking it up on YouTube, I couldn't find one that did it in a way kind of like I just showed you, which I find to be pretty simple. A lot of people will use a, uh, a graphic EQ with a bunch of bands. So if I came into my effects rack, let me see if I could do this here. Um, I'll just use a random effect that is not being used for something like this one, my tap delay. Um, let me see if I can do this without flipping my camera. Okay, so you guys have seen these before, right? This is a graphic equalizer. It's got all those different bands that you can cut or boost at. And what they would do is that would actually give you the same ability to see where those problems are and, and it will overlay those little bands and stuff. You, you could then do the exact same thing. You could find the band that was closest to your problem note and cut that band and it would do the exact same thing. I normally have an EQ on this channel, like it's not blank. So if I wanted to not delete you know, the EQ I have, I could insert this graphic equalizer effect as a secondary EQ uh, in the effects slot, then I could do the exact same process um, and find whatever band, whatever note is the problem and I could cut it. So, you probably won't end up having to do that a lot, um, but on occasion you're going to have a problem with a microphone and that is how 
you wring the microphone out and get rid of those frequencies. So I hope this video was helpful and uh, hopefully can supplement. I couldn't find a YouTube video that, that was good. So.